Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Christensen and in this video I will show you how to set up a OneNote notebook in a style inspired by the bullet journal system. Now I myself am an avid OneNote fan and I use OneNote to keep just about everything in my life organized and moving ahead. I'm a YouTube creator, blogger at OneNoteWorthyLife.com and I host the OneNote bullet journal group on Facebook. Now I have deliberately kept this setup as simple as possible and as closely mirrored to the original bullet journal setup as possible. Once you get started in OneNote, there are loads of things you can add to your notebooks and journals, but this video will help you get started with a basic setup in OneNote. First things first, make sure you have watched the original bullet journal video. If you haven't watched it, I want you to pause this video, open a new tab in your browser, go to bulletjournal.com, watch the video, and then come back. If you're going to do that, now's a great time, so go ahead and pause this video. Okay, now before we can really get started with setting up a bullet journal inspired notebook in OneNote, we need to talk about some differences between OneNote and analog notebooks. Well, first we have a difference in size. An analog notebook has a definite and very limited size. OneNote is almost infinite for our purposes. There probably are upper limits somewhere, but for the average user it's uh, quite large, uh, bordering on infinite. Another big difference is when you use a bound notebook, your pages are fixed in place. In OneNote, your pages are movable, um, and that means you can kind of put them where you want them, move them around at will, and keep like pages with like. That also means that we can't really use page numbers in OneNote because they're largely meaningless. We can um, add pages, delete pages, move pages, so page numbers aren't really uh, meaningful. Um, another feature we have in OneNote is, is that pages can be linked to each other and they can also be searched. Now these things kind of all combine together to tell us that indexing is not as important in OneNote as it would be in an analog or paper journal. We can find our content and keep it organized by uh, much, other, uh, much more suitable means for a digital system. Another big difference in OneNote is that you have infinite editing. You can keep a page up and just continue to change it as you, um, as you use it over time. In a paper notebook, you might be able to cross something out and redo it, but there is a limit to how much you can actually edit it. Another difference is page size. In OneNote, you can have uh, very large pages, you can have very small pages, and you can have um, each page be a different size. There is no set page size limit like a paper notebook. Um, in OneNote, we also have the option to use sections in our notebooks, and you can see these sections at the top here of my screen. This is a notebook I have set up for recording demo videos, and you can see that these tabs represent different sections of the notebook. These would be sort of like the sections in a three-ring binder. In a normal paper-bound journal, you wouldn't have sections, but we do have the option to use those in OneNote. Um, the final difference is in a paper notebook, typically you would use handwriting, and I'm going to be showing you just about everything today using the keyboard. Um, if you have access to a stylus-friendly device, you can use that to handwrite in your notebook as well. And I'll get into why I'm using the keyboard in a little bit. Okay, so let's get started with setting up our bullet journal inspired notebook. First thing we need to start with is a notebook. If you're new to OneNote, you will have your first notebook already set up when you set up your account. Uh, I am not going to use sections. I'm going to do everything in this one uh, section of my notebook. So the very first thing we need to do is set up our index page. So I'm going to click at the top right here where it says add page and I'm going to create a blank page. I'm going to title it index. And there's nothing on it because we haven't created any other pages. So um, the next thing we need to create is a future log. So again, I'm going to add a blank page by clicking Add Page, and I'm going to call this my future log. And I'm calling, I'm adding the word demo uh, because I'm going to make it here on the spot for you. Now I've experimented with a few different ways to do this. I think the cleanest and easiest is to use the table function. So I'm going to click Insert table. And just as is shown in the bullet journal video, I'm going to use a, uh, three, a two by three table. So it's two columns by three rows. Now I'm going to 
make this uh, nice and wide by dragging it. And I'm going to add my months in here. Now one of the things I really like about using uh, OneNote for my future log and the table function is that these uh, table cells will grow as large as you need them. So let's say we have July, we have event 1, event 2, event 3, and you can see the cell just keeps getting taller and taller as I need it. So if you have a particularly packed month, the cell will grow as tall as you need it. You can also keep things in order. If something comes up between these events, you don't have to add it to the end. You can just put it right in here. Um, and so that's how uh, this would work. Um, and again, there's many ways you could do this. You could draw, we have the option to draw in OneNote, so you could just draw, you know, lines to make six sections on this page, or you could even draw boxes. But I, I like the table function because of the way it keeps things separated and organized. Now, in the interest of keeping the video short, I have uh, completed a filled-in future log. So this is what one might look like when it was all filled in. Now, the next thing we need to do is go back and... Um, link this in our index or put it into the index. Now again as I mentioned we don't have page numbers to work with but we can link it. So I'm going to, going to click insert link and I'm going to uh, select I'm going to pick a location in OneNote which is the third option down here and this is in my demo notebook it's in this bullet journal inspired and I'm picking my future log filled in page so now we have in our index a clickable link that will take us right to that page, which is fabulous. I love that. Okay, so the next page we need to create um, is the June monthly log. And I'm going to show you a super cool trick for that, which is uh, how to create a page and a link at the same time. So I'm going to use these double brackets. These are found on your keyboard on mine they're right next to the P key and these are the um, hard uh, like right angle brackets as opposed to the curvier ones so you're going to put two of them in and I'm going to call this June monthly log demo and I'm going to close it with two brackets as well and you can see it created a page called the June monthly log demo and if I go back to my index that is a clickable link so that's just a quick little shortcut for you so now on this June monthly log page, I'm going to again use a table only because I, I think I think it's the cleanest and simplest way. So I'm going to insert, oops, get, click onto my page there, insert table. And um, as a shortcut, they give you the option to create up to a 10 by 10 table, but we um, want to do a three column by 30 row table. So I'm going to click on insert table and we want three columns and unfortunately the most number of rows you can do is 25 so I'm going to do 25 and then I'm just going to click in my table and add five more rows by doing so I'm clicked in there and I'm going to go back into the table and we're going to do insert below one two three four five so now we have a table that is three columns by 30 rows and I'm going to drag this right hand column so it's nice and wide that's where we're actually going to enter events and then I'm going to select these and center them and I'm going to go ahead and put my page, my day numbers etc and the first day of June is a Thursday, so I'm going to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. So this is how you would do it, and then just as in the original uh, bullet journal video, you're going to add your significant events to each day. Um, 
So just to keep the video short, I do have one that's all filled in for June, and I have my June tasks over here. Um, now, to represent tasks, I've used the dot from the keyboard, and I will explain this in a little bit more detail later. Um, it, I have just found it to be the simplest and um, most efficient way to indicate a task using a dot, which is how the original system spells it out. Okay, so the next thing we're doing is a daily log. So I'm going to create, I'm going to click on Add Page. Now what I like to do is add a line down the middle. So I'm going to click on Draw, pick a nice color here, and I'm going to draw a straight line just to kind of split the page in two. Like that. Because if we're really drawing like bulleted notes, we don't need a lot of room. And so um, just to give you a quick demo, this is it would be a task, so pick up groceries. This might be a note. Um, and then an event might be, I use the O on the keyboard. So those are the three bullets indicated for items that you rapidly log every day. A dot for a task, a dash for a note, and a circle for an event. Um, and for speed, I have created a filled in page. This is what a filled in daily log for five days might look like. Now, um, it's not pretty, but it's very efficient. Um, all of these bullets come from the keyboard, and the keyboard is convenient no matter what kind of device you're using OneNote from. If you have a stylus-enabled device, you might be able to handwrite, but if you don't, you always have access to your keyboard. So getting used to doing this with the keyboard makes it very quick and efficient. Um, I feel like, for me, the most important part about rapid logging is that it is, in fact, rapid. It has to be fast, easy, and convenient, or most of us won't do it. Now, as indicated in the original bullet journal system video, uh, once you complete a task, you're going to turn it into an X. Now, I have tried a few different ways to do my daily log in a rapid fashion, and this is the closest I can get to the original system. I found the keyboard characters uh, really to be the fastest and most efficient way to indicate what you're noting. But in the interest of completeness, I do want to show you uh, just two features that you might want to experiment with. One is um, you have option to use these tags. These are found in the home menu, and these are just tags you could uh, you know, use for tasks or calls or ideas, that kind of thing. The second one is also found in the home menu, and you can create a bulleted list, and you have a variety of bullets. Um, the reason I did not use either of these for rapid logging is because they're a little more cumbersome, they require more clicking, more work with the mouse, and they may appear different depending on which device you're using. So again, the keyboard gives you consistency across devices, shows up the same way no matter what device you're using, and you always have access to a keyboard. Okay, now we'll, we would go through the entire month and create this daily log that would be all filled in up through June 30th, and then the next thing we would do is create the following monthly log, which would be July. Now OneNote allows you to save and reuse pages if you want. Uh, you can see my tutorial on page copy, which I'll put a link to in the comments. Once you have a monthly log that you like, you can save a blank version of it, and then you can just reuse that blank by copying it each for each month and um, customize it for that month. Now, since I've already demonstrated how to set up a monthly log, I'm going to use one that I already created for this video. So here is a July monthly log, all filled in. So that's what it looks like. Tasks are over here on the right. 
Now we have to go back to uh, the daily log and do some cleanup on this. This is um, what was known as migration in the bullet journal video. So we want to scan our tasks and see what's not done and then make a decision about what to do with them. So this is the same daily log that I showed you, um, but I've gone through and checked off some of the tasks as if it was the end of the month. So we're going to scan our tasks and put them where they belong. So let's see. So uh, this task was not done, but I think it's still important. So I'm going to change that to a right arrow. Oops. And I'm going to migrate it to the tasks for July. And then I didn't do this either, and obviously that's important to make a doctor's appointment, so I'm going to migrate that as well. I'm going to go to July, add that. And this one. Uh, has worked itself out, so I'm just going to cross that out. That's how we indicate that something has been canceled. So uh, this month is all cleaned up now. Everything has been either forwarded or scheduled or uh, crossed out. And then there was one other thing, which I didn't leave room to demonstrate, so I'll just uh, add it here. There's a bullet that faces the other way. Um, and that means it was put on the future log. So this would be for something that was very far in the future that you couldn't um, put on your next month, but it went on to the future log. Okay, the last thing I need to show you is how to add a collection. So I'm going to go back to my index, and I'm going to um, update this index for the pages we've added to make sure it's complete. So we have uh, the daily log, and then we want to do uh, July. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more, which is my first collection. I'm going to call it Time Management Books. Okay, and I use the trick with the double brackets to create a clickable link. I'm going to go to my blank page here. And I'm going to actually use uh, the bulleted, the bullet option from the home menu. And let's see. So I'm just going to add some books into this. One more to add to that. So this is what a collection might look like. Um, it's just a, uh, a list of things that are related and information that kind of goes together. So that's it. We've now set up a OneNote section that models the official bullet journal setup. As you use your journal, you may find more ways to make it useful to yourself. Uh, but this should get you started with at least a basic setup. Now, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments of this video, and I'll do my best to help you out. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button so I know you like this. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe by hitting the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.